Now, bipolar disorder, you got to color some things later, huh? You got some homework, coloring. Buy that big ass box. What's the biggest box of crayons? 100, 48, what are they? Who got kids? Who bought the big box? Who cares about their child? Got the one with the pencil sharpener in the back. Y'all don't even like y'all kids. I see it now. <laughs> Whatever. I got my baby some. My grandbaby got crayons. Okay. So <laughs> the big box y'all need for this picture. Because this patient is off the hook. And you're going to have to use every color you got to describe it. So here's what's happening with this patient. Back in the day, we did not call it bipolar. We did not. I didn't know that word until I got all up in here and doing this stuff with y'all. What we called it, and you did need to know because it's in the little words, it's in the little boxes up there, is manic depressive episode. We called it manic depressive disorder or episode. So you got to remember it's two different things except for the patient who has something called bipolar 1. That's mostly depression. They may have a little bit of mania, but that's usually depression only. Bipolar 1 can be very much leaning more towards depression. Okay, so here we go. This patient, the best way I can explain it is what happened in Cleveland. And ironically, I didn't see it. Y'all saw it. I didn't see it on the news. Y'all seen it. Here's what happened in Cleveland, Ohio. It was Burlington Coat Factory. Somebody pulled up in a limousine, got out the car, walked into Burlington Coat Factory, and announced to the entire store, everybody in here, you can go shop on me. I got you. I got your bill. Just go on, get what you want, honey, because I got it. Now, my question to everybody in this room right now is who's crazy? The person announcing that or the fools that went shopping thinking she about to pay for it? So they went shopping, honey. They went shopping. They done piled the damn carts up high as hell. The line is going all the way up and down and around the store. The lady is in line paying for people. Now they, they said, let's see, was she for real or what's going on? There's something called overdraft protection. She got in the line first. She got her shit. The person behind her got their shit. The person behind them got their shit. Then the store went crazy. Everybody started shopping everywhere. They said, she was for real, y'all. She, she buying all our shit. Now here's the problem. Round well, about the fourth cart, shit got declined. She said, don't worry. Don't you worry. I'm going to run up here to this bank. I'll be back. I ask you again, people. Who's crazy as hell? The woman who ran to the bank or the fools who waited for her to get back? <laughs> Do you know she ain't come back? Of course she didn't. She'll be arguing with the banker. Ain't no money in her damn account. She didn't come back. Guess what they did? They tore up the store. They rioted through the whole store, tore the shit up. Who remember that? Anybody remember that in Cleveland? Oh, yeah. It was on the news. Oh, yes, honey. It was about four, maybe five years ago. Yeah. So the daughter of the patient got on the news and said, I apologize for my mom. She's suffering from bipolar disorder. What was it called? Remember to write it. It's called delusions of grandeur. She had delusions of grandeur, y'all, because she believed. It wasn't her fault. She believed she had hit that damn lotto, and it was on and popping. She believed. She went all up into the bank arguing with the people. I hit the lotto. Got to be some money in my account. Meanwhile, she's just hallucinating and having delusions, right? So delusions of grandeur, these people say that they made the NFL, and they're five foot two and 90 pounds. They say that they had, oh, I got a good one for you. Uh, they come in the workplace and they say, it's a lady. Say, hey, just so you know, me and Obama dating. Michelle, step off, because me and Obama got this. Oh, yeah, you know my house last night. Those are delusions of grandeur, so remember that. Uh, another one, what's another one? Oh, yeah, I own all the malls in America. 
Uh huh. I became per private owner last night. <laughs> what? Delusions of grandeur. Okay, so they're not that uncommon. This is something that they do. Now you can't you can't miss this patient. Usually when I have time, I dress up like oh, a like. I know. I just, see she got the value of me dressing up over the years. But I usually dress up, you know, real crazy. This person is going to stand out in the crowd just like that picture does. They got flowers with stripes and polka dots with, with squares. And they're very loud in their colors, very, very flamboyant colors, really loud, neon, pink, and all this. This is the one with the red, white, and blue hair and the big old earrings. Uh, they're very seductive. So if they're the lady, they've got the girls hanging out, right? They're all up and out in their shirt, okay? And if they're the guy, their pants are so tight, you can see the rug on their scrotum, child. <laughs> it's a problem. <laughs> so it's just crazy. I mean, really crazy stuff. <laughs> so this patient looks like none other, okay? The makeup is very gaudish. This is that sky blue eyeliner, but it ain't quite above the eye. It's all up in the eyebrow. This is the person that shaved their eyebrows off and then drew them in with pink. They got the blush just bright red. I mean, just, you know them. Y'all done seen them down there by the terminal tower. Down <laughs> the, the, Everybody knows who this is in the neighborhood. There may be a mini skirt with no, no, uh, no panties, huh? Just the stilettos. And they got this, and they're 78 years old. So this is not that uncommon. This bipolar patient, when they're in their manic phase, you got to remember, they don't need sleep and they don't need to eat. They don't need sleep. They don't need to eat. They go on shopping sprees with your credit card. They go on gambling extravaganzas. They're very euphoric, which might be on the side, I don't know, on your little list of select dolls. Euphoric, I think. Expansive. <laughs> uh, euphoric is this. If it's not there, I do want you to write it in. I'd like you to know the words. Euphoric is always in a very outrageously good mood. Euphoric. Very talkative, increased libido. Now everybody getting laid. Remember with depression, did nobody get laid? Now this patient, everybody getting laid. Strangers getting laid. Folks out in the West somewhere getting laid. Everybody getting laid. But just like they're like really high in their presentation with regards to their mood. They can also be very irritable. This patient can have road rage. This is a patient that can have road rage. And if you've been paying attention even with one eye open, you know that's on the increase. Yeah, that baby. Yeah, that was horrible. Okay, so they really, really, really this is a mood disorder, and they're really off the chain with what's going on. Now, I want to give you some important words. One is belligerent. This patient is belligerent, meaning they're going to be fighting you in every way, every which way, argumentative, belligerent. This patient has an inflated self-esteem. They are a risk taker. And they talk like this so fast. This is like, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> That's called pressured speech. He just gotta get it out. He just gotta get it out real fast. Gotta, I gotta, I gotta go. <laughs> 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 
crazy, crazy, crazy. That's all in manic phase, everybody. That kind of presentation. Um, I want you to add some more things. Lots of jewelry for this guy or gal. The very colorful people. The childhood history or adolescent history might have included ADHD. You have got to rule out other illnesses before you assume it's bipolar. And this is near and dear to my heart because I remember being totally like this person in my own life. And I went to the counselor. I said, something's really wrong with me. I was yelling and screaming and then depressed another moment. And this is not like me. And it was my thyroid. It was dangerously deadly. <laughs> so on your test, you had to know that this looks like Graves' disease, untreated Graves' disease, untreated Graves' disease. That was your rule out. So if a person is doing this, it might be Graves' disease. It may be Huntington's disease. Okay, this was really scary. <clears throat> Very scary. Okay, now, so you've got your delusions of grandeur where the patient thinks they're powerful and wealthy and rich and, and omnipotent and God and everything else, okay? And then you have this other presentation where they are just off the flipping chain. The period of mania lasts for days. They're going on and on, shopping and drinking and sleeping with the world and doing all this other kind of nonsense. And this can last for up to a week or more. I used to have this patient with bipolar, and she would call me and tell me, I need to come in and get STD check because I don't know what happened, but I did everybody in the bar yesterday. And she was very serious. So I said, okay, baby. And she's like off her meds and all this other kind of nonsense. So, yeah, it's bad. It's really bad. Okay, so that's the mania. Now let's go into the depressive side. This lasts for months. And typically it follows a manic episode. Typically it follows a manic episode. And I mean, you just have to use common sense. I guess if I did everybody in the club, I'd be depressed too. Yeah. I suppose if I spent all my money on some gambling and lost everything I ever had, I'd be depressed too. I suppose if I did a risky investment with swampland in Florida, I'd be depressed too. <laughs> and that's what you got to remember. Some of the shit they done did, yeah, they're depressed when they come down off of that and figure out what they done just accomplished. Some of that is just, you know, oh my God, did I do that kind of thing, right? Uh, and the relationships that they lose, right? Because if you're, you know, if you're the same one and you're in a relationship with this person, you're like, I'm out. I'm so out of here. So that would be a loss of a relationship. Uh, so the depression can last for months. And what you got to remember is it's worse than any depression known to mankind. It's lower than any depressive person on my board. So this is even higher risk for suicide than any other person on the board. More at risk than any other person on the board. So we have a rule. As healthcare providers, we do a lot of discussing matters, of course, with each other. And we kind of have a rule amongst each other. And our rule is, if your bipolar patient misses their appointment, because they're such colorful people and they like attention, they love attention, so going to a doctor's appointment, especially if you're a fun provider, they like that. So they usually can't wait to come in. And we have a really good time, actually. So if my bipolar patient missed their appointment, 
our rule is, and it's a sad rule, is they're probably already dead because they don't miss appointments. They would never dream of it. It's their opportunity to be flamboyant and, and extra. So, and it's happened twice in my practice. It was just that simple. They're not alive anymore because they don't miss appointments. It's their opportunity to shine. So it's the saddest reality, but when we don't get them at the appointment, we follow up like crazy with this one because they may be already dead. They are going to be more than just depressed. They're going to be really trying to take themselves out. We may say, for instance, the depressed client won't answer the phone. This client threw the phone out, moved out, became homeless. I mean, that's so dramatic in the depression that they're really, 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 really high risk for death. They're really high risk. So this patient is, um, this problem that they're having is biochemical. It usually shows up in the 20s or 30s, usually the 20 or 30s. You don't suddenly get bipolar at 50, which is why my counselor looked at me like I was crazy. It's like, okay, we got to test you. You don't suddenly get bipolar in your 50s. It's usually diagnosed by the time you're 30, 35 at the most. Somebody knows something's going on with you that's not quite right. Um, for the patient, the management of this patient is challenging because obviously the manic phase may warrant some serious antipsychotics. And then you have the depressive phase that would warrant some serious antidepressants or at the very least, some atypical antipsychotics. So for this patient, in the middle of this manic road rage, I can't come down, they may indeed be the perfect candidate for a Haldol shot. They may indeed be the perfect candidate for restraints. Because they're in their manic phase, right? And what I tell you to put on your, your notes, when they're in their manic phase, they can kill you. That's called homicidal. When they're in their depressive phase, they're suicidal. So when they're in their manic phase, they can be homicidal. When they're in their depressive phase, they can be suicidal. There is something called hypothymia and hypomania. Let's just make sure we know both. Hypomania is a big one. This person does not require hospitalization. That person does not require hospitalization, but they're usually at a point of euphoria. So they feel kind of good, they're at a point of euphoria, and this is going to alternate with depression. Hypomania. They're at a point with euphoria. They do not require hospitalization. They're not bipolar yet. They haven't gotten all off into the deep end manic phase yet. Another word that is popular is cyclothymia. With cyclothymia, this is a chronic mania. And depression, it's chronic.
I would describe it as mild mood swings or mild bipolar. So these two often are used interchangeably. Now the, the medications are used with <coughs> therapy, and the therapy for this one is behavior modification. So meds with therapy, and the type of therapy is behavior modification. So you give positive feedback and rewards and encouragement for good behavior. And you discourage or give negative feedback for inappropriate behavior. So behavior modification, again, is giving positive feedback, rewards and encouragement for good behavior, negative feedback, discouragement for inappropriate behavior. This patient needs a private room. This is a private room. Have to set limits. This is for bipolar, period. So you have to set limits, give them a private room. No groups. No groups. If you look at the next page, it might have something about manic attack. That page is where I want you to put some medications and nursing care because you already have your signs and symptoms on the other one. This patient needs a mood stabilizer for treatment. A mood stabilizer for treatment. That's what we say, a mood stabilizer for treatment. One of the mood stabilizers for treatment, what's number one treatment of bipolar? Lithium, excellent. If you look in your pink packet, you have a handout on lithium. Probably a good idea to go ahead and put that on there. And it is number one on any test. It's like super duper important. Put some stripper glitter on it. Spray some perfume around it. Prick your finger and bleed on it. Take your gum out your mouth and stick it in it. Did I say enough times that it's important? Oh, okay, I just want to make sure we was clear. <laughs> now, so lithium, huge, huge, huge on any test, generally speaking, a select all. Your school might have taught you erroneously that it's toxic at 2. Uh, no. It's toxic at 1.5, and your patient is usually 1.8 on any test. So you don't want to go and roll in there talking about 2. So 1.5. And the signs and symptoms of toxicity, diarrhea. Diarrhea and ataxia. Diarrhea and ataxia. Now, I personally wrote some stuff on this handout trying to hook y'all up. I wrote push fluids as your highest priority as a nurse. And we're talking three liters a day. Push fluids, highest priority as a nurse. Above that on the line, I want you to write that this is a lifetime medication. You don't ever stop it. It's a lifetime medication. You don't ever stop it. It is absolutely okay with pregnant patients. Starting in their second trimester, it's okay for pregnant patients. 
Toxicity is such an issue that you need a level 12 hours after you start the medicine. Lithium toxicity is such a deal, a big deal, that you need a, a lithium level 12 hours after you started the medication. Then every two to three days after that, and every one to three months once you stabilize. There are three people on any given test that need a high sodium diet. Who are they? Addison, Lithium, one more, Cystic Fibrosis. These are the three people on any given test that need a high sodium diet. So for this patient, it's not like you're telling them to add a whole lot of salt. You're just telling them to be generous with the salt shaker if they like salt. Don't hold back because the, the, the typical American uses too much salt anyway. So this one, oh good, use a lot of salt, great, keep it up. Okay, so high sodium diet and weight gain is the number one side effect. Weight gain is the number one side effect. Part of the teaching with this drug is no caffeine. No caffeine. Take it at the same time every day with food. Don't crush it, chew it, or break it. And look at the words already written on your handout. It says increased levels of lithium with da 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 da. So these all increase your toxicity, right? Mm -hmm. And then at the bottom, you decrease your risk of toxicity with da 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 da. Okay. Now, so you have to know that. Okay, you kind of have to know this. But at the top, like I said, number one. Push fluids. Push fluids. Okay, now, on the bipolar manic phase, going back to that, because we did our drug for that. Bipolar manic phase, I want you to add your lithium. So lithium is the, you know, drug of choice, but there's others. We'll go over those in a minute. But for now, let's take care of the daggone patient in manic phase. So you've got your lithium. And by the way, lithium does work in the manic phase. Okay, so you got your lithium. Um, you have your behavior modification. You said that already. And then we want to add distractions. We need to distract this patient with gardening. Painting, walking, <laughs> decrease the stimulation, decrease this patient's stimulation. Allow finger foods so they can walk and eat because you know, remember how they don't like to eat? I mean, they just don't need to eat. So give them finger foods, let them walk and eat. No TV. They'd be screaming at the television. No TV. They need a quiet, calm environment. Music is good, but watch what you play. We probably don't need Fetty Wap. Probably need some jazz with no words. That would be better. Soft, gentle music, jazz, no words.
Try to get them into a bedtime ritual, warm bath at night, massage that you're not doing because they'll probably try to take that as a turn on. <laughs> Flexible eating times. And we say keep it simple, Shirley Temple. So don't be going into a long, drawn out explanation about nothing. Just keep it simple. So I'm going to give you some examples of keeping it simple but being firm. Okay. Um. Sally comes out with her uh, blouse loose. The girls are popping out. Um, she has very tight skirt on, bending over every chance she gets. And so keeping it simple for her would be, Sally, you need to change your blouse and you need to change your skirt. It's too tight. We keep our blouses zipped or buttoned and we keep our clothing loose and flowy. Let's just keep it simple. Okay, so here's another one. Uh, Sam is in your face getting loud like they do. This patient does. Sam, I need you to step back six inches away from my face right now and put your fist down. Now, he's not mad at you. He's really yelling about the situation. If he was yelling at you and his fists are clenched and his face is flushed and maybe he's sweating and, you know, going off the deep end, well, of course you need to call somebody to help you. But in this scenario that they gave you, Sam is just yelling. But he's awfully close. There's some bullshit, man. There's something got going on around here. It's just bullshit. Sam, step back six inches away from my face. I deserve a personal space. In other words, you're keeping it simple. But you're keeping it firm, correct? Okay, let me give you another one. Because this is a good one. You're going to have some stuff on here with this. Okay. Sally, well, let's use a different one. Sarah's going around hugging everybody. Hey, boo. You know, got the girls all up in your nose. Okay. Sarah, we deserve respect, and we need you to respect our personal space. You are too close to everybody, and everyone does not want a hug. My bad. <laughs> okay, so you got to keep it safe, okay? Uh, bugaboos. They pick one person they just in love with. Uh, Mary, Eric deserves his own quiet, personal time, and you are invading that time right now. Can you leave Eric alone and go help me set up the art room? Because she all over Eric, okay? Just keep it, find the answers on your test to keep it simple. But firm, but simple. Okay. All right, so that's important. Uh, more meds. Remember what they were called? They were called mood stabilizers. Here's some more meds. One of the top meds of choice is also Lamicto. Some atypical antipsychotics that we like include Abilify, Tegri, I mean um, Whisperdol, Zyprexia, Seroquel, Those are some common, common drugs. With Lamicto, just put a star and say, watch for rash, deadly rash. So watch for rash. Hmm. 
Okay. Now, in the depressive stage, all of us would agree that they might need ECT, right? Since they're so suicidal, they could use ECT in their depressive stage. Oh, and also remember that ECT is safe for the pregnant woman. I think that was on your test. Okay, so we all have a little. So you got a list. Uh, you got hand washing, checking the locks, checking the stove, closing the windows, locking the car over and over again. And mine, other one, is hair pulling. Anybody doing their hair pulling, fingering their hair all day? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's me. Uh, it's called this. This one's on the test. Let me show you. Oh, that's what happened to you, darling. Oh, my God. <laughs> Trichotillomania. I don't know if I'm spelling it right. So, trichotillomania. Started in college for me at Ursuline. Trichotillomania. Hair pulling. Yep. You don't even think about it. Thank God I don't do like eyebrows, eyelashes, but I know some people that do. They do the eyelashes, the eyebrows, everything is gone. Yeah, I know those people. So my daughter had a friend in college like that. But I completely understood. Okay. Now, you don't interfere with the ritual. In fact, you had to know for your exam that you allow it to take place and you allow time for it. So if you are coming in the room and you have to give a shot to your patient and they're in the middle of washing their hands 50 times, but they're in the middle, you just have to wait until they're done with their washing their hands. And you can't interrupt or stop them or any of that stuff. Okay, so you better know that. you got to wait till they're done and you don't want to interrupt it. Oh, that's too cute. Now, this person, oh, one more thing you got to put in your notes. This person's caught up in rituals and rules. Rituals and rules. Everything has to be followed. Every policy must be followed. The rules must be followed. Everything has its place. What are you doing? Things must be on time. Why do you have that out of place? You know, they're really, really, really out of control. So a lot of nurses and doctors do fall into this categorization, but typically for nurses and doctors, it's not disrupting our lives. For this patient who needs medication, it's disrupting their life. Their hands really are bleeding. They really have been late to work about to lose their job because they got to check the locks 50 times before they're able to leave. Not like you and me with our little quirky stuff that we do. No, this person's life is being disruptive. They're losing jobs over this. They're breaking up with relationships over this. Their family can't stand to be around them with this. It's really out of control, okay? Now, the number one quality the nurse can have is patience with this situation. And typically our treatment is a combination of an SSRI with a tricyclic antidepressant. One of the SSRIs that works the best is Luvox and one of the uh, tricyclic antidepressants that we combine it with is anaphronil. You did want to remember that this patient has an anxiety disorder. All of these are anxiety disorders. All of those are anxiety disorders. So this patient has an anxiety disorder. Now, what does help is bringing reality to them, saying to them, you have done a really good job of cleaning um, this sink, Sarah. You have been cleaning it since 7 o'clock. It's now 3 o'clock, and you've cleaned it 17 times. That's okay to say that. you got to say kind of like, because sometimes they get caught up in it and they're lost with it. So, Sarah, you've been cleaning the sink since 7 this morning. It's now 3 o'clock. Um, I was hoping that you could go to dinner with me. You know, you can do that. That's therapeutic, actually. Just to point out that, okay, you have now washed your hands for 402 times. <laughs> uh, that's okay. You should do that. That's okay. But you're not stopping it. You're just pointing out it's 
been now seven hours of cleaning. We can probably go and get to the picnic now. Okay, so don't forget that on your exam.